Hi, this is Steve Gilmore, and this is the Gilmore Gang. Uh, I want to welcome from New York, uh, John Borthwick. Hi, Steve. Thanks for being here, John. Uh, from, uh, I don't know where you are, Robert? Aspen, Colorado. Okay, Robert Scoble. Welcome. What's up? Uh, from, I don't know where you are, Keith. <clears throat> Palo Alto, California. Welcome, Keith Tier. And uh, I don't know where you are either, Kevin Marks. <laughs> I'm in San Jose, California, just a different okay. corner of my garden today. Excellent. All right, so that's who we have, and uh, there's really nothing to talk about <laughs> this week, except that Twitter is uh, on the rampage, and uh, I'm not happy about it. But we'll get to that uh based on uh, on the conversation. So let's go to uh, Mr. Borthwick in New York. Uh, what's floating your boat or otherwise uh, d today? Um, 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 you know, I, I've had a fairly full week. I mean, we've, had, we've got a lot of stuff going on with Dig. Um, hey, Kevin, that's nice. <laughs> Just notice we're in the majority today, so I'm flying the flag. That's, that's what's floating your boat. <laughs> Just what majority you're in, I, we'll, we'll find out. But go ahead. What device was that, Kevin? Was that it? That's an iPad. Oh, it's an iPad. Yeah. Okay. I, I didn't think there were many Apple products in your life. <laughs> That's not true. <laughs> Just device body. So anyway, so um, um, I've had a busy week. We've got a lot of stuff going on with Dave. There's a lot of good stuff happening now. We've had, uh, uh, I'm, I'm having a little hard time hearing you, John. Um, I've had a busy week. Um, I was walking through some of it, but that's not necessary. I think that um, what's happening, I mean, generally in the tech world, um, you mentioned at the, at the outset, you mentioned Twitter. There's a lot of, um, I think that the platform, uh, we're in the middle of sort of the platform wars, which um, Tim O'Reilly and others talked about, you know, 18 months ago, 24 months ago. And, you know, Twitter's in full throttle um, uh, in the middle of that. So is, uh, so is Apple and Google. Uh, you know, the map stuff, I think, is, is, is particularly interesting. I mean, it, there was, a, um, there was a, a deep dive into that in All Things D, where they sort of exposed that, uh, you know, Google had made a lot of uh, requests on Apple to, um, to integrate services in order to get turn-by-turn um, -turn directions. Uh, uh, included with maps in uh, iOS 6 and that that seemed to have broke the negotiation so it's you know sort of typical platform and uh, sort of bundling and uh, attempts from one company to bring a product uh, uh, to bring a new product I think in this case it was latitude and maybe Google Plus into uh, into iOS and that uh, forced that discussion apart so we've got platform wars happening there this platform was or issues happening with Amazon too so I think we're in throes of uh, all right so let's let's pull that change. apart a little bit uh, Robert Scoville what's your uh, pick any of the things that he just said and uh, and expand uh, maps is I think the, a very interesting platform war that's going to be playing out for three, four years as this age of context arrives. Uh, you know, Google is working on these Project Glass glasses that are going to show you stuff as you walk around the world. Uh, and we just saw an app that came out yesterday from Google that sort of does that on your uh, Android phone. Um, we're going to see more and more and more of these kinds of apps over the next few years. And if Apple doesn't get free of, of Google, it is going to be hamstrung in three or four years uh, strategically. And uh, you know, I thought MG Siegler's post about ripping off the Band-Aid was, was right on tone. Uh, I didn't see that. What did he basically say? He said they had to rip off the Band-Aid and take the short-term pain uh, now instead of prolonging it and waiting another year or two uh, and trying to extend this Google uh, you know, contract. Now, there's lots of politics and backroom dealing, and, and I think John nailed that part of it. But uh, strategically, Apple has to be in control of its own destiny. The future of products is all the services that are, these products are going to do. It's not how thin the iPhone is. It's how cool is it? How, how, how good are the notifications? Well, how, much how cool it is is how thin it is. I mean, what are no, you saying? It's, it's increasingly going to be less about how sharp the screen is and how uh, thin this thing is. And it's going to be increasingly about how good Siri works. And if you talk to Siri and it doesn't work well and the Android works better, you're going to tend to start going that into that ecosystem. 
Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, fine. Uh, that's what platform means, in other words. Yeah. Okay. It's the ecosystem. Yeah, but it is how thin it is, is why it's cool. Uh, it's one thing. I, it, yeah. You know, I've got name another the, one. The speed of it is fifty times cooler than how thin it is. In fact, I wish it was thicker with a damn big ass battery on the back of this thing, because I am waiting for Mophie, my Mophie packs to come, because I, I my battery doesn't last that long. In fact, uh, <coughs> where's my Mophie pack? I got a Mophie. Pack. All right. Well, while you look for your Mophie pack, uh, uh, Keith's and, here. I, you know, I'll um, around you know, I, up. Oh, hang on a sec, Robert. You go find your Mophie. All right. <laughs> so, uh, you know, the maps thing to me is is uh, really overstated. I um, I got an iPhone five straight away. Um, here is my Apple Maps. I've used it a lot since I got the iPhone five for drive drive instructions turn by turn. It's replaced my in car. Uh, my in car navigation sucks, and this kills it. I haven't had any problems with finding the right place. So I think the problems with it are massively overstated and it represents a quite a significant upgrade to Google Maps uh, in terms of what it does. So I actually like it and... Um, so give I, me an example of what uh, is an upgrade. Uh, the biggest upgrade is, is voice spoken turn by turn directions when you're driving and the ability to Well email. that's an upgrade to, to match what to, Google's to, been to doing Apple on Maps Android. Apple featuring yeah. Google, yeah. yeah. Yeah, but it's an upgrade for the iPhone. Okay. Um, the, my iPhone's now used in a scenario where previously I didn't use it. Okay. And, and, and it works really, really well. The, uh, the other big platform... So in other words, basically because uh, Google refuses to make that available uh, on any platform except Android, uh, the fact that Apple was forced to do it is actually a good thing. I think so. And it, I mean, function, functionally, I haven't noticed any problems. I've only noticed good things. So the conversation, in a way, feels a bit like a, a platform wars marketing conversation rather than a real life, our average people going to care conversation. Oh, God. Here we go again. Yeah, Keith, I couldn't, I, 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 I disagree completely. I mean, I, I find the, I, I found it almost unusable. Um, it, I, there well, were you're mistakes in New York. That were, uh, here in Manhattan, which were on streets, which were just, uh, it, look, it's going to take them six months to get all the data right. And so I think it will get there. And the turn by turn I love, but um, I, there's been a bunch of issues with it. Uh, the traffic data on it is uh, is really weak. Um, and I think that it's, uh, I, I think it's an inferior product today. It's inferior to Google, but it isn't inferior to the previous iOS maps when, when it comes to the feature I talked about. I, I'm not questioning what you say about the quality of the data. It just hasn't impacted me <laughs> in the area. Uh, the traffic stuff, right. I agree. Uh, I, I was in a traffic jam last night. It didn't tell me. But even if I'd have known, there wouldn't have been anything I could have done about it. So I, from a <coughs> I would love you to, when you were back in Europe, to use it because I bet you that in, in Northern California, I mean, uh, that's where the data always gets, you know, the, the data for Northern California usually works pretty well, but if you're outside of that zone uh, or bubble, um, it's, uh, it, it, uh, it's I, I think that they've still got a lot of work to do. So they'll get that. I mean, I have no doubt they'll get so, that. I find, know, I that's find why the, I live in California. I, mean, I find the UI to be inferior too. I find the UI to be less usable too. Not the, the turn by turns great. I think I the, the subways are UI. inferior in New York. <laughs> John, in uh, yes. China, the data on these new maps is a lot better than Google. So it is spotty. It is inconsistent. There's a lot less data, which is what I really care about. That, you know, with this age of context coming, you need uh, the world, the the mobile phone or the glasses that you're going to wear to know where you are and what's around you. You know, and the Apple Maps are just in an early state. It. I remember the day, you know, when seven years ago when Google first came out with Maps, it couldn't find my house. Uh, today, those problems are gone because they've spent, seven, I don't know, they have 7,000 people working on these things, and uh, they've had eight years to, to work on them. Google is way ahead in this area. Um, Apple has to do this, though. If they don't, right. they are screwed long term. Right. But I think it's, I think it's a fascinating that, um, you know, what, what starts off as being... Um, a sort of ancillary feature, you know. Over time, Google's built. I mean, there was that great blog post. Um, that I think it was on The Verge where um, you know somebody broke apart the data layers uh, that are involved in Google Maps now. Yeah. And so, you know, what starts off as an ancillary feature 
um, suddenly becomes, uh, you know, central to the platform. And I think that, um, um, I think it, it, it was a, I think Google made a mistake by if all that Apple had wanted was turn by turn, I think Google should have done that. Well, I think the distinction is between what Google was offering as an API and what they're offering as a built-in app. Um, I th you know, given that app originally Google wanted to ship their mapping stuff on iOS and in Apple denied them and had the whole FCC fight in 2009 where they were trying to ship Latitude, um, I think they, what's available through the API doesn't include the turn-by-turn -turn stuff. Apple had been using the Google API to build their maps, and so it would have been, write us a new API for this new thing so that we can write some code to call your API would have been the discussion going on, as opposed to write, Google, please write an app so that we can ship it too. Um, right. And you know, they, Apple didn't want to do that. They wanted to keep control of the engineering effort, but you know, they, they were using that older API, and they hadn't really updated their maps app that much since, um, you know, since, right. since then. Um, what, what's, I'm, what's interesting is, is that Google hasn't had one ready. They've basically said, okay, we, we don't want to ship this on iOS previously, and now uh, clearly there's an opportunity for them to do that. They need, and they, they, I expect they will get that one out when the, when the quality is up. Um, it's because awesome. it makes it's sense for them to seven. be plugged into that ecosystem too and get the feedback, um, plus be able to do the um, suggesting places and uh, offers and things and all the overlays that you get on the, the Android app that, that basically generate revenue for Google. That, that seems like an, an obvious thing for them to do. So I'm sure they're busy working on it at the moment. I think it puts Google in a world of hurt, basically. Uh, it, it forces them to uh, ship <coughs> an a, uh, uh, a Google Maps app for the iPhone. And why wasn't that ready, Steve? I mean, if, this, if the... If the, the thing fell apart in June. I mean, it's it's amazing that it's not done, right? Exactly. I think that uh, you know that they're going to be hurt badly by uh, either you know embargoing uh, the app like they've been doing for years, or you know in, unless that yeah. they do what uh, unless Apple does what Google wants. Yeah, it's going to put them in uh, a a somewhat less than open position, which uh, is richly deserved. Yes, Robert. Uh, well, you know, it's it's also helping all these other competitors. Uh, the letter that uh, Tim Cook sent to everybody today, apologi apologizing for maps. In it, he recommended trying Waze and like this is the Bing map, and it's and these alternatives have advantages that Google Maps don't have. But particularly Waze, which is crowdsourced, I find Waze more accurate than Google is so even on Android, and it shows yeah. me why there's a why there's traffic. Somebody takes a picture of the truck that's overturned a mile ahead of me, so I know how long I have some context for why I'm going to be stuck in that traffic jam for a while. Okay, well, I guess that's the show. <laughs> um, well, is there, you know, we didn't do a show last week after the iPhone came out, did we? Uh, no, we did, uh, the, we did one at Dreamforce. And we didn't... Yeah, that we, was before the iPhone 5 came out. And I don't think we've had a thorough discussion about what is really going on at Twitter. I mean, what yeah, no, I, I'm just kidding. Yeah. Obviously, Keith. Okay, obviously. I knew that. I was just being ironic. Did, did you see that Instagram just passed Twitter? It, it, John, is that right? I mean, I saw that on TechCrunch. I, I was like, wow. Yeah, that's D, uh, DAUs, right? And, um, yeah. What does that it's, mean? I don't understand. Uh, daily, daily active, active users. users. What is that scratching uh, sound? Daily active users, according to, I think it was Comscore numbers. That, uh, and so it's, uh, it's surpassed Twitter. I mean, I think that. Well, how many people use the, the website anyway? I mean, I don't so, understand that. Steve? Yes. What are you saying, Steve? I'm saying, how many people use the Twitter website? Not I many. Yeah, so I mean, look, that's a great that's a great question, and that gets to the crux of you know, the uh, a part of the ecosystem question. I mean, I think that I've always I've always been a huge advocate in uh, you know of Twitter having a diversity of endpoints and you know being uh, a, a platform where. You know the multiple ways to access the um, the the infrastructure and multiple UIs for different use cases. Um, I think that when Twitter sort of you know crossed the 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 Rubicon of deciding they wanted to be a media company a few years back and raised a lot of money, um, they sort of you know laid the foundation for where we're going now, which is. Uh, that they are, you know, doing everything they can to move the 
attention and the eyeballs to Twitter Inc. owned properties because that's where they can monetize them at um, at a hundred cents on the dollar. Because if there's a client out there, they have to you know the client has to share in that revenue in some way. Yeah, and but so the, so. Know. So that's what they're trying to do now. How much of the traffic today? You know, once upon a time, you know, you know way back when, sort of in chirped land, right? Remember that when you know back then, you know, fifty percent of the traffic was um, uh, was in the ecosystem. That data hasn't been public for a long time, um, or at least I haven't seen it, so I don't know how many people. Um, but I think it's still, um, you know. I, I don't know what it is, but that would be fascinating to know, and that's an important that's an important question for so, you know, as you think about the ecosystem and the like, and you also think about the fact that I mean Twitter's clients still are not great. I mean, I think that if they're going to pursue this path, I hope that they can start to build really wonderful clients um, out of Twitter Inc. Because you know, I, I use Tweetbot for example on the iPhone now, um, just because I find it just a more efficient UI. Um, than Twitter's client, um, but is that does Tweetbot exist? Uh, you know, after a hundred thousand uh, users, or or not? I don't no. think so. Oh. No. So, so basically, there's a whole bunch of uh, uh, best practice, or uh, you know, uh, what's the term in the enterprise for uh, uh, best of breed? There are a whole bunch of best of breed apps that are going to go away, and so that's going to tend to uh, drive away people that use Twitter on a power user basis, which is going to tend to drive down the uh, quality of the stream. So uh, they're going to have problems with that, and they're also going to have problems like the one that I just mentioned about uh, 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 Apple. Uh, I'm sorry, Google. Uh, being forced to be more open, they're gonna they're gonna be under pressure to be able to develop apps or you know services for apps uh, of the best of the of their third parties who are now gone. So uh, you know I I don't know why I I think I know why and I think you've really described it uh, that they're sort of in a, in this uh, rush toward an IPO uh, phase where they have to monetize in order to be able to justify, uh, you know, an IPO price, which will justify them doing the kinds of things that they need in order to be able to get to the revenue, et cetera, et cetera. Sounds like Facebook model. But uh, Steve, and mainly for John, actually, um, I, I don't know if I'm thinking of this in the wrong way, but to me, what they've done is they have shrunk their potential opportunity, uh, even measured by monetization, because the a the analog to me is Google AdSense. Google AdSense gets a hundred cents on the dollar for ads delivered in the Google environment, and it gets an unknown number of cents per dollar for ads delivered outside of the Google environment uh, via AdSense. <coughs> we suspect it's about thirty to forty percent of of the money comes to it, but the volumes off of Google are. Uh, increasingly uh, important to them. So what would be the problem with Twitter having an owned and controlled advertising platform on its wholly owned properties and putting ads into the stream, let's say every tenth tweet is an ad in the stream, on their not wholly owned properties? Wouldn't that grow their opportunity and grow their revenue? It, it, so it feels to me as if the decisions are counterintuitive from almost every point of view you could think of. Yeah. This, uh, Keith, I couldn't agree more. I mean, I, um, I think that the more distributed, and if you go back and you look at Google, because I mean, I know this from you know sort of my former life when I was at AOL and Time Warner. But if you go back, you know, Google had, uh, uh, you know, so there were three simple ways where you could reach Google and monetize with Google. One is obviously Google.com, which would be you know they would own all the monetization. Uh, and then there would be a self-service model, model where uh, Google would share, but only share small amounts sort of in the rage you're saying. But then Google in between those two had, you know, there were five or six big partnerships that they had. So they had one with AOL, they had one with MySpace, you know, they had these big partnerships where these, uh, you know, third party services use uh, Google search and, uh, and Google monetization. And I can tell you, I mean, the numbers associated with that are not public and, uh, but, uh, but the, the, the economics um, of that worked 
I think worked very well for Google, but also worked very well for uh, the AOLs and the MySpace of the world. And so, um, for a period. So, so you know, why Twitter couldn't have pursued that? In other words, have sort of you know three speed lanes, right? And so there's the yeah, you know, there's the Twitter owned and operated stuff, and then there's the second uh, lane uh, where people have deals with Twitter, and there's a revenue share, and then maybe there's a third lane where it's self-service of some kind, but Twitter has the majority of those economics. I, yeah, you know, to me, I think that's a bigger business, but I think it also speaks to the fact that, um, you know, the the Google uh, monetization model was a was a very um, was very intent rich and was very thin um, and was you know very it was you could transport it and and uh, or you could you know display it in multiple forms the, the Twitter monetization uh, system I'm not sure if it's that transportable um, that they've you know that they've created thus far and so yeah it doesn't have the I mean it ju just doesn't have the efficiency that Google had right because Google is so intent rich and intent focused so but maybe there was a solution to that but I think that there's just you know I, I think they've they they talked about this a year and a half ago and now they're doing it so you know I think that it's uh, you know on one hand I'm you know I'm confused and frustrated but on the other hand I feel like you know they, I, I hope that they get it right because they're finally doing what they said they were going to do, and let's see, you know, let's see where it goes. I, yeah. I think I think of it as the the Yahooization of Twitter. They're turning Twitter into Yahoo, which is basically uh, a destination media model that, that yep. won't scale. Yeah, I, well, yep. I don't I don't agree with that. I think that what they're doing is doing whatever they think that they can get away with. That's always been Twitter's model. And, uh, you know, they've shut down services left and right uh, as soon as they become viral because of, or originally because they couldn't support it uh, from a technical perspective. And then mostly uh, ever since then uh, because they want it for themselves. The problem that I think they're going to have short term is, is they're not going to be able to deliver the services that we, people actually need. And by, you know, cutting off their third-party uh, relationships they're going to they're going to cut off those services appearing anywhere else and it's going to leave a, a hole that you can drive a truck through for uh, among others google and google plus because uh, you know the you know people always think that these issues like track and um, uh, you know at mentions and you know the all the nonsense that I spew occasionally when I write something but in general that we talk about on the show a lot these things actually are the drivers of this uh, real-time social era and you know I'm somewhat surprised that Twitter has left uh, such an opening for their competitors I think well, look, that their calculation is. I think they're just to finish the thought. I think their calculation is is that Facebook uh, has too much on their plate and that they won't take advantage of it. And I think that's probably accurate. Uh, do you think so? Yeah, uh, I do. Uh, feel free to jump in, Robert. Uh, I'm just every week Facebook gets better for me. I, I you know, the lists are far superior on on uh, Facebook. The noise filtering on the newsfeed is far superior. The the people are on, on Facebook are far superior and more engaged. Yeah, but, uh, my but that's, all, that's all that's all that's all at the behest of whatever Facebook's algorithm is. There's no uh, ability to be able to tune it. Uh, there's not enough ability to tune it. I'll give you that. You know, a lot's happened in Facebook. There's a world. lot. Th there's a lot of tuning you can do on Facebook, and most people don't. But it's not the tuning right. well, you I buy. Which is I already have a job. I haven't got time for that job. I was going to say, a, a lot has happened in Facebook land since we last, I last did a gang. Uh, Zuckerberg's appearance at TechCrunch Disrupt is worth talking about because he made the claim there that Facebook is now a mobile company. And I think, it, uh, you know, Twitter has an audience engagement and monetization issue. Facebook has uh, a different issue, which is it has an audience and it has them engaged, but they're on mobile and it isn't monetizing it. Uh, well, that's I, I, one of their issues. I, what my my point was not that they 
my point was that they have plenty of things on their plate and trying to uh, to take advantage of what Twitter is opening as a uh, a problem for Twitter and an opportunity for others. I don't think they're going to do it. I agree with that. I think that that, that you know, and and they're also um, confused. I mean, for Zuckerberg to say Facebook is a mobile company is a joke. It's clearly a desktop company with some mobile clients rather than a mobile company. And I think it just illustrates he doesn't know what a mobile company well, is. Well, I I, I I think you're overstating that. I I, I think that. Uh, they're a hell of a lot more of a mobile company with this uh, new client than they were before it, uh, yeah. you know. And these things take time. So, uh, uh, I'd say, and, I'd say and compared to who, I think they're a hell of a lot more of a desktop company with a strong mobile client. Uh, a mobile company is an architectural I, shift. It's not just uh, where you deploy a client. I disagree. I think otherwise, that otherwise everyone that can mobile is at the center of a strategy. It is not the strategy. But it, for, for Facebook, it isn't even at the center of their strategy. It's, it's getting I there. Disagree. I, I disagree. I, you know, when talking of my friends at Facebook, they are pushing hard on mobile and and rethinking what their business is. Um, yes, uh, was uh, Microsoft an internet company when Bill Gates uh, did that uh, hard right turn back toward the internet and sent the memo out and and put internet features into Windows ninety five. Um, not completely, but the, they uh, got there before a lot of other people. And, and Facebook uh, has an iOS 6 client, Google, Google Plus doesn't, and uh, Facebook doesn't crash on me every five minutes when I try to do things like the Google Plus client does. So, what? And Twitter. Google is, Plus heresy from Scoble. Film it alone. Well, you know, Twitter, mm -hmm. you know, I'll give Google Plus props when they when they earn them, but they haven't done much for the last year. I'm, not, you know, I was. Really I'm not going to argue against myself, Robert. Of course, yeah, of course, <laughs> I'm right. Of course, John you are. Borthwick, I interrupted you at some point. Did you have something that you wanted to? Yeah, I wanted to. I mean, I was going back to. Um... Put your, bring your mic up. Thanks. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Steve. Yes. Yep. Good. Um, I was going back to so the, the, the Twitter Facebook discussion. Look, I mean, I think that Twitter is um, yeah, th there's a uh, there's a great product team there. Um, you know, Sippy, I think is um, is a really smart guy. I've never met him, but I've always enjoyed his work. And I, you know, I'm hoping that some good comes of this. But I think that there is a link between the um, the Facebook stuff and the Twitter stuff, and that is, I mean, if you go back, Keith, if you go back to the Zuckerberg's discussion of mobile um, at Disrupt, right, he said um, the mobile audience is larger, it's more engaged, and there's this <clears throat> there's this option to do um, uh, interstitial or intrusive advertising on mobile that's closer to TV. And that third point is, I think, uh, to me, that is that's part of the problem. Is is that we got to we've got to as an industry, we've got to figure out uh, how to break apart and then rethink this ad model from the ground up because we're living in this ad model that is this you know it's 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 we revert all too quickly to this intrusive ad model which basically Zuckerberg was saying mobile's an opportunity similar to TV where yeah. you can capture the full screen and place ads on people this device is my fucking phone I don't want like a full screen ad on it yes I'll and throw my I throw my Facebook away if he does that yeah and so I think that, and I think he, I think he knows that. I mean, I think that he was signaling partially just how important mobile is to them. So I think, uh, you know, but we've got to figure out. These companies have got to figure out how to make monetization work on mobile and how to make this thing, you know, formally known as advertising, make sense and how we right. can take the but, dollars. Well, I think the uh, new gift the feature <coughs> that turned on yesterday is a huge part of that. Which uh, one? The gift feature that just turned on yesterday, which came out of the Karma team. They bought this company called Karma. And I bought my wife a, a gift card on Star Starbucks yesterday. That new feature is a huge way to monetize uh, mobile. And I expect that we'll see more of features like that. I disagree, though, that we don't want to see ads in certain places. I mean, I, you know, there's... There's a lot of places in the world where we still want ads. Um, the app is the ad. I mean, come on. Do we have to keep uh, doing this? But Robert, I, Robert, I think that the, there was this line of contextual. The, the moment you get across it, an ad suddenly becomes uh, something really useful. And you just got to get, you got to use all the contextual data and get across that line. I mean, I'm still seeing teeth whitening ads on Facebook. Um, hmm. and, and I'm not. I, 
Because I've I'm... told it enough about me. But, no, yeah. John, John's had dentures for 10 years. Yeah, English. <laughs> English. It's a cliche thing. Um, I'm, see I'm seeing Lay's ads right now, so Lay's yeah, potato so, chips. I've just seen... Uh, so, so the moment that all that contextual data becomes, uh, you know, be, and and that it moves into an environment that users can find a way to share it in a manner that is uh, that's useful to them, then suddenly I think advertising becomes something very different. But the pro part of the problem is is that in the rush to monetize and in the rush to you know meet the expectations of the VCs or the expectations of the street, um, what we're doing is that. All too often, and I've seen, I saw this in the old days of AOL. Well, I mean, you know, Keith referred to Yahoo Ideation, is that you just grab the previous business model. You You're breaking up a little bit, John. You just grab the previous business model and try and slap it on, right? And so, because the advertisers want to, they, they want simplicity. And so, but. The answer is not just to slap the existing business model, or broadcast uh, advertising model, onto these onto these devices. Oh, I think I, that's that's accurate. Uh, the, in my opinion, the you know, do you have Fandango on your uh, on your phone? Yeah. Okay, that's the ad. The ad changes every day, every week. You know, what are we going to go see after the show? Well, I don't know. Let's look at Fandango. That's the ad. It's a it's a real time stream. Ads are the network. Yeah. Okay, so uh, I uh, to just to get back a little bit closer to center on this, uh, I don't hear in the discussion that we just had, I don't hear that uh, Facebook is significantly behind or ahead of anybody else in terms of this issue of mobile and advertising. Um. They are ahead in mobile identity. I'm talking uh, about every, overall. Well, I, I, I'm talking about overall. If you look at my new iPhone, and I loaded 120 apps from scratch last, last weekend, a lot of them, a, a good percentage, maybe more than half, allowed me to sign in with Facebook. And some of them allowed me to sign in with Twitter and Google. But Facebook was the dominant uh, player in these new mobile ads. So when, when we say Facebook is a mobile company, they're getting something that yeah, I, I, other I players I didn't say that they getting. weren't. I, you know, well, somebody, I, I think uh, John did. Right, or but I, did or this is called the Gilmore Gang, so what right. I say is more important than maybe you. Uh, what I'm saying is, is that for the purposes of this show, I have not heard anything profoundly uh, advanced about any vendor. So to put it in the in the reverse... I don't think that, Twi uh, that Facebook is that far behind anybody else. I don't think they're that far ahead of anybody else either. Uh, identity is obviously a, an important factor, and as particularly as uh, Facebook started to have a ubiquity in terms of uh, Facebook Connect, I started clicking on the Twitter icon. Now that Twitter is doing what it's doing, I'm going to stop clicking on the Twitter icon until... Uh, you know, hopefully those kinds of signals are are repeated. These guys need to understand that there needs to be some sort of connection between the value to users and their service, or they are going to be impacted by it. And in ways that in a real-time uh, economy can be very, very viral and very fast. And I don't think that they realize yet uh, how far over the line that they've gone, uh, you know, I'm not talking about app.net. I'm not talking about any of these other kinds of, you know, uh, Identica or any of the uh, route arounds of Twitter because that is a, a ship that has sailed over and over again. It's not, uh, and I'm sure that there are huge fans of app.net, whatever the hell that is, uh, that are, are going to not like that comment. But just from a scaling perspective, we are at a point, as Borthwick says, where this stuff needs to be figured out and needs to be figured out fast because whoever does figure it out uh, more successfully than their competitors is going to build up uh, some substantial headway. So, so I, I think there's really, uh, there's really a few strands that we should pursue in the weeks ahead. The first is, is, is mobile really going to be monetized primarily through advertising anyway? I think that's a really important question because... Uh, with, the, with the fact that people like Apple are making money from hardware, 
and subscriptions and, and sales of apps, there's a big question mark about whether you really need advertising for the ecosystem to be viable. Clearly, media companies need to monetize via advertising. So then I think there's a second strand to the conversation, which is, what is a mobile ad? John talked about context. I think format is as important as context. Um, you know, banners or interstitials or full screen, which are basically borrowing from the web, uh, ad formats that really don't work on mobile, seems to be a big mistake. But are there formats we could imagine on mobile which would be more appropriate, and in some ways compelling if there is an advertising model. I think that's the second conversation. AdMob, for example, it strikes me as not having asked those questions. That they're, they're being a little bit lazy intellectually and they're just doing web advertising on mobile. Uh, and Google is, is state-of-the-art there. I agree with you, Steve. No one is better than Google, but Google's pretty bad at doing that and Facebook's worse. Um, the, the third conversation, I think, is... Um, the more interesting one, which is uh, where do, you know, who is the double click or the Google AdSense or for that matter the organic of 2013 and 2014 that, that is going to start thinking these things through and driving them? Because at the moment I don't see creative thinking going on at all. I, I see a lot of lazy thinking. Uh, it's a tech check. Uh, Dave Weiner says that we're easy hearing a, a big echo, particularly on Scoble. Scoble, can you uh, uh, talk for a second. Yeah, this is uh, Robert Scoble, and we're testing my mics. Um, you know, it's to say that mobile ad doesn't work, you know, uh, Flipboard is putting in mobile ads in between their flips, their page flips, and it's it's pretty nice. Um, I, I, you know, there is still innovation to come on on mobile advertising, and and. Uh, Facebook has an advantage nobody else does. They know the demographic to a deep level. And I was just hanging out with uh, marketers from Toyota and Nike. They are hungry to find ways to reach customers. So maybe it doesn't look like an interstitial, but there's a lot of money in, in a lot of pockets just down the hall from my hotel room uh, of people who want to get to us. And uh, that money is going to be satisfied somehow. Taken. <laughs> replaced okay John Borthwick I know that you're going to be uh, having to bail soon so uh, I want to get more of you on, on the show uh, I'm getting tired of the uh, Facebook discussion but uh, so, so can I we still move want on? to wail on, uh, on Twitter some more no <laughs> let's, let's move on let me ask you a question Is, um, so I was looking at this thing um, you, uh, and put the mic up to your mouth and don't squeeze it. Yeah. I was looking at my Nexus 7 the other day, and uh, it, it's, it feels like all the buzz around that has died. Um, is, is that what do you guys think? I mean, device-wise, hardware-wise, we're coming into the Christmas season. I thought the Nexus 7 was going to be the device for uh, the Christmas season, unless Apple comes out with the mini iPad. Um, but it, it now seems to have been... A, um, a reference design and that's about it. It just doesn't seem to be, I don't see it around, I don't see it in the subway, I don't see it around people using it. What, John, what I, give a talk, I gave a talk the other night where I interviewed uh, Eventbrite CEO and I asked the audience how many people had an iPhone uh, 5 and I think 10% of the hands went up and people afterwards came up and asked to play with it because a lot of people still haven't had their hands on an iPhone 5 and and they see it and it's like oh I want one I I want I want to get that and there's a lot of unsatisfied demand on iPhone and um, I you know I think that's taken away a lot of the hype of the Nexus but I, I think some of the hype has gone to the uh, Samsung S3 I've I've seen a lot more discussion of that over the last couple of weeks yeah well I mean the subway you know, they don't have Wi-Fi in the subway so that cuts down on the amount of uh, Nexus sevens you're going to see in that context. Uh, the Nexus 7, as far as I'm concerned, is w a lot more than a reference implementation because it's the uh, device, if Google uh, synchronizes their mobile uh, clients with their desktop clients, that they're going to be able to push through uh, adoption of, among other things, Google+. Plus. So I think it's a major important thing. Uh, it introduces people to, uh, you know, the latest... Uh, build of Android and uh, and it has a whole bunch of services that if they as I said synchronize 
with the mobile, with the uh, desktop, like uh, Google Talk, for example, with video, uh, you're going to see a hell of a lot of usage of this thing. So, uh, and compared to what? I mean, are we going to see uh, Microsoft Square or whatever they call it uh, in huge numbers? I doubt it. I think it'll be, you know, 10% of the market at best. Uh, so, at much less of a cost and much less and much more accurate of a bet on Google services than uh, whatever uh, Microsoft is going to try and uh, push uh, Office down our tablet throats. Uh, I think that the it, it's a very, very smart play and it, it continues to have uh, a similar value. I would say that since I have my iPhone 5 that I, I use the iPhone 5 a lot more because the reading space is much uh, better than the previous one and the um, and also it's got my corporate email as opposed to uh, what happens with uh, uh, with the Nexus 7 which is basically just Gmail so uh, but I still carry them both and over time as I accumulate uh, information that I haven't read uh, to be able to move that over to the Nexus 7 is going to be uh, where I get a lot more work done so I think for it's Steve, you're coming in and out for me. Sorry, I'm also mumbling. Okay. <laughs> you were going to say something, Robert? No, uh, the speed of the new enough. iPhone makes makes it just smoother, and and I find I'm moving a uh, reading behavior over to it that uh, I I was spreading out to the Nexus Seven um, and to the iPad mm -hmm. um, using the iPhone more. And in fact, I'm that's why I'm carrying around these Mophie packs, you know. Yeah. So I can recharge on the road. I think there's a huge, uh, uh, I don't want to call it war, but there's a huge uh, engagement ongoing now among the, the various d uh, connected device services. Uh, and uh, Nexus 7 and Google has uh, this route through Chrome, uh, you know, open something on Chrome on the... Uh, on the phone, and then it's available on the Nexus 7. It's also available on the desktop, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And uh, with iOS 6, uh, similar services, the reading list is now much more uh, uh, distributed across uh, iOS, including the desktop uh, via Safari. The uh, there's a persistent store of, of those pages uh, when you go out of range. Uh, which is not a feature that I, I don't believe that Chrome has. And the problem is is that you have to go through hoops in either direction to be able to move something across the divide between the two uh, platforms. And luckily, Microsoft doesn't, I don't care about Microsoft at all in any case either way. So I don't have to move between their platform. Uh, although this uh, investment in... Um, what is it called? Clout by uh, Bing and Microsoft is interesting. Does anybody have any comments on that? Well, they claim it's for the data. They claim that what they want out of cloud is to get the data uh, and obviously um, trying to create a, a reference system of um, influencers and their scores against various topic related things would be right in the sweet spot for Bing. But it's feels like one of those, you know, uh, technology-driven decisions that Bing, that ignore the fact that Bing itself is is still pretty much irrelevant. Thanks. Okay. Anything, Steve? Uh, what? I'm sorry, John, you said? I'm not hearing anything. I uh, got to drop off anyway, but I, um, I'm not hearing anything. Okay, so Steve. just give us a wrap uh, on, uh, on your thoughts about this week. And how unhappy you are about uh, about Twitter? You ask him for a rap um, for I, you since you know, you're going to be unhappy. leaving. I'll, I'll tell you why I'm unhappy. It's not that I mean this has been it's been this train's been on been moving for a while, so it was kind of it was inevitable. But I'm unhappy because I, mean, I think that it's it's not the uh, it, it's it's not the future that I thought would unfold. It's not. I think it's going to be. Uh, I as Keith outlined. I mean, I think it turns into a smaller company, but. Um, but we'll see, and um, yeah, and I think that I think this technology. I mean, the, this micro messaging bus that was created is this. The you know, I periodically I just like sit there and I look at it with wonder, and I go, you know, what these guys created, 
uh, with you know this very lightweight messaging with the asynchronous follow model was genius. And you know I think the world needs this. It's an important piece of architecture that uh, that should be that should that should be out there. And um, you know as it, if it's going to be turned into a media company, I worry that that's going to uh, transform it into something else. But we'll see. I mean these guys are smart guys. Maybe they can. Uh, implement on this and make this all make sense for uh, first and foremost, I hopefully hopefully for users. Well, remember that uh, the CEO John. is somebody so. who uh, worked in the ecosystem to begin with. Yeah. Uh, so uh, I I don't think that they're uh, and it was somebody who understands feeds really well, right? Exactly. And who understands you know understood RSS and built a business there and so on. So you know maybe. Did, yeah. did you listen to Dick's talk to the ONA, John? That that was interesting. Because um, what I what I, I picked not. up from that was that they are moving from the mobile centricity to more to a more web centricity. They're going almost the other way. Well, why so don't you he was why don't you pick up on they this? They want Kevin. people to build stuff inside Twitter. They want the um, a, an enhanced version of the cards to have embedded apps and information in that, um, and that's what they plan to have in future. Such that the tweet is a headline for a larger chunk of media that that may be interactive and have an app in it. But, but doesn't Kevin, that, Kevin, doesn't that doesn't that then mean that the next stage, you know, beyond the the scrap that's been going on with the developer community now it happens with publishers true as well but i think part of it is that they they're thinking that they're embedding the publisher stuff directly now you're seeing that already with um some of the the cards the cards, stuff. Right. I mean, the cards have, time Tech but if people are not embedded. clicking through and not reading the underlying content then the publisher's ability to monetize is basically going to be captured by twitter right, right. not only that but not necessarily are, is it is it true, Kevin, that they're I uh, I read somewhere that they're not investing anymore in the Mac client, that they really want you to come to the website, if, uh, and if that's true, and I I believe it's true because they haven't updated the client for Retina display. It's blurry on my new Retina display. Um, they really are misjudging wh what their u users want. Was that they're they're favoring TweetDeck as their desktop client um, because that's the thing that the professionals used. He explicitly said that in the ONA thing. All right, so John, thanks. I did, uh, for I did not hear that bit, Kevin. Sorry. All right, let's continue this, but without John. Thank you, uh, John. We'll see you again soon. I'll be here. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, go ahead. Continue. <laughs> uh, more more so, stuff about Twitter, please. Thank you. So I was. Um, it's, it's worth listening to that discussion Dick had at the ONA with with the the journalists because I mean, he was partly playing to them, but um, he he was you know he did try and answer some of these questions and his his take was his analogy was they want to be like Amazon where they have the store but you can also sell secondhand books in it which was a kind of weird analogy but he's he's he is saying they what they want to be the media bus but the tweet becomes the headline for a richer thing they want to embed things there that aren't just images they want to embed pages and eventually apps as well such that the the, the tweet becomes a richer thing that can expand which maps in with the way the, the iPad app changed um, and that they want that that to be their new ecosystem so he's seeing this as a, as a he's explicitly selling this as a transition from one architecture where you call things remotely to something more like you know the old embedded app architecture on Facebook, where you there were things embedded in the in the in the main page, which is interesting because is the opposite way that everyone else has gone. Google shut down iGoogle recently, um, and there, there's less of that. You know, and they shut down the game stuff in in Plus that was doing something like that. So it, it, they they seem to be pushing in the opposite direction there. But it, to me, it's as if you know, it, it's as if um, Dick had a birthday about four years ago and someone gave him a golden bicycle and he's saying I really hate bicycles I want to have a scooter and he's destroying the bicycle which is a perfectly awesome bicycle because he really wants a scooter it, uh, it makes absolutely no sense he's like no, but hang on. I mean you can be right without having to be uh, uh, you know confrontational about this well I'm, be I'm not he's not destroying this he's no, he just is. weakening it no, I think he's destroying. He's destroying opportunity. I, I'm not blaming him, by the way. In Yorkshire, you have this uh, spoken mannerism of saying he or you when you, and it sounds personal. I'm not being personal about it because I don't actually think Dick is making all the decisions. It's the whole board is making decisions, um, and uh, and so I don't want to single him out. I'm just saying there was John called it the uh, the, the the short messaging bus. This internet-wide, I mean, really global messaging uh, subsystem 
that was being tapped into and sucked out of by everybody, every TV station in the world, to turn that into a centralized destination with a much smaller audience um, just seems to be uh, unbelievably destructive of value. Okay. Well, we're getting a lot of complaints about the audio, so I'm going to wrap this show up. Um, I don't know quite what's going on, but uh, uh, that's different than what I'm hearing here. Uh, but uh, let's just go around the table and start with Scoble. Um, I love my iPhone. Um, uh, other than the maps, and even then, I really don't care that much about this whole argument. I, I care long term about it that um, the future of products is based on, on top of knowing where we are and uh, so it'll be interesting to see how Apple uh, fixes that problem but for now use Waze or use Bing or use Google's own maps in the web browser and Google just posted by the way how to do that how, um, to, oh, what, how to use Google Maps how to use Google's mobile maps in Safari but then post it to your home page so like an app uh, you know, i.e., what Kevin Kevin uh, yeah back when uh, the iPhone about. first came out, the, yeah the uh, the web hole yeah. Oh, by the way, there are some people who are having no problem with the audio, so I rescind my uh, 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 retirement uh, uh, for. Uh, I got to run, minutes. anyways. I got people waiting here, and uh, I'm hanging out with these uh, snowboarders and skiers, and it's really fascinating stuff. <laughs> it's more fascinating sometimes than talking about Apple's maps. Um, Twitter is, uh, you know, Twitter is just, uh, every day I see Twitter just becoming more and more boring and other systems becoming more and more interesting. And I disagree. Is, Twitter is not becoming more boring. It's becoming uh, more becoming boring What's becoming more difficult to do is to extract value from it because uh, they are cutting off their third-party developers uh, it, who have provided all of the uh, user tools that have made it a compelling service. And they don't have uh, the speed with which uh, to apply those services to their own tools. So they've got a short-term problem. Mid-term, I don't know what's going to happen. Well, and they haven't fixed their core uh, infrastructure to a point where I have a, a brand new list of tech startups, 1,200 startups on one list. I can't do that on Twitter. It's impossible. I can't do it on Google. I can sort of do it on Google Plus, but I can't share it on Google Plus. So they're forcing me to take people over to Facebook and build Facebook system where it works better, and that's maddening to me. It's it's yeah, because like, it won't work. Well, exactly. <laughs> Anyways, I'm gonna go drink. Okay. <laughs> Twitter drives me to drink. That's the name of the show. Film at eleven. Film at eleven. Or more drinking at eleven. Okay, thanks, Robert. Uh, Keith's here. Wrap, please. Um, I think that we're at the beginning of uh, the beginning of a period where Apple is going to become more and more dominant. I think when they launched the iPad Mini on October the twelfth, uh, the period between that and Christmas, you're going to see them pretty much owning every category, and I think it's going to be driven by their software excellence, despite the Maps thing, which I don't think will be much more than a blip on the map of, of that. And I think Google's got its work cut out with Android to try to even approach the level of software sophistication that Apple has on the iPhone platform. I agree with, uh, I think Maps is a bogus issue. I think that it's going to uh, rebound negatively on Google uh, as we see just how long uh, it takes for them to come up with a Google app, a Map app, uh, which is a big mistake on their part, which they should have uh, figured out. Uh, weeks ago. On the other hand, I think what Twitter's doing with uh, uh, their ecosystem is providing a big opportunity for Google uh, because all Google really has to do is to actually deliver some form of API access so that uh, you know smaller but much more strategic groups of people can uh, develop the kinds of tools that right now uh, are being abandoned on the uh, Twitter platform. At which point, you know, it's it's not like this me real real time worldwide messaging bus just disappears because Twitter is being stupid. Uh, it's just a matter of whether or not we can uh, build tools on top of platforms, and uh, it's one of the reasons that I work at Salesforce. Uh, 
speaking of Salesforce, uh, Kevin Marsh. So um, I think there's there's a bunch of back and forth this week. I don't think you know. Yes, the iPhone five is a great improvement on the previous iPhones. It's very nice. Um, it's sort of up to par with the the current generation of Androids now in terms of you know weight and and, and screen quality, which is good. It, um, I think that the Maps thing is going to bite Apple because they are stuck. They're not as good at cloud services as Google or Facebook are. Um, and that's that's the, that's you know that's been their Achilles heel. They've they've if you if you you know if you look at the way they've they've dealt with mobile me and the way they've dealt with ping and all these other things they've built that that are essentially cloud services, they're not as good. And Maps is is becoming a cloud service. Yeah, so what? That, that's things that so they've what? Got, the, got to work out there. So what that they're not as good? I mean, you know, basically <laughs> they used uh, Google Maps among other things in order to become uh, ubiquitous uh, and turn into the richest company in the world. So. Yeah, you know, what part of that did they make a mistake about? Right now, what they're doing is is that they're switching over all the data uh, to their own uh, servers. Yeah, and that's going to take it'll you know, take some time. But it all how, how what a different task that is. It took Google a while to get this right too. They started out buying in Maps data too. Yeah, but and they realized to actually get the data of the quality they wanted, they had to drive five million miles of streets to get the ac the, the accurate data that they needed. Um, and they put that investment in, and they've been doing that for several years now. And they've, you know, it's not just America; it's a bunch of other countries too. And the fact that they that they've got that data and they're growing it is, a, is a, as Robert said, it is a huge commitment by them and something they that they see as important. If you um, look at what Tim Cook the, said, you know, organizing information is Google's core business. It's not Apple's core business. Apple's core business is, is making beautiful products that um, use software as part of that. I think um, that you're overstating that. that. Something they've been good at historically. I and think you're overstating. Struggle to get that. I think you're overstating that. I think that uh, Google's core business is uh, building on top of their uh, dominant platform in terms of devices. And I think that they're going to do it very quickly. Just because something took X years uh, or man years or whatever you want to call it uh, for Google to do something doesn't mean that it's going to take that long for Apple to catch up. Uh, uh, that's, that's, that's possibly true, yeah. I mean, the, the other news for me this week that we didn't really cover that, that was interesting was the Adobe announcements where they were basically saying, okay, we give up on Flash and PDF, HTML5 is the future, yeah. which was, um, that was interesting to see and interesting to see how they were doing that. Oh, I'm glad they got saying, the memo. We've been working with the standards bodies and we've inserted new code into WebKit and so I'm running a dev build of Safari here to show you what my tool can do and I'm running a dev build of Chrome here to show you what my tool can do because I built this new tool that's working with the future of HTML5. That was a really interesting development. I'm glad well. that they read uh, Steve Jobs' memo of two years ago while he was still alive. Yep. Yeah. You know, they paid attention and they've, they've dealt with it. You know, that's, you know, Salesforce, we announced a whole bunch of HTML5 support at Dreamforce last week as well. So I, I see that as, you know, clearly being a, a, the future of interop on these things. And the fact that you can fail over to Google Maps on, on the web and get get something that works fairly well is also a marker for that too. And the fact that you can wrap uh, HTML5 in a native client uh, is where the world will go. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry to call a halt to this, but uh, this has been a great show. I want to thank uh, John Borthwick from New York. I want to thank Robert Scoble from, where are you? Aspen. Aspen. What are you doing there? What is going on there? There's a snow and skiboard music or a video festival, film festival, and uh, I'll be posting some of the films. They're just uh, amazing um, films that are enabled by these low-cost GoPro cameras now. Um, and uh, really, it's uh, an excuse for uh, high-end marketers from Nike, like the Nike marketing team is here. Uh, I, I met uh, a guy from Amazon, a guy from um, uh, Oakley, uh, Toyota's here. It's a small little conference. Okay, so it's a secret conference where people with money are, are talking about making more of it. Exactly. Okay, excellent. Uh, Keith here, uh, thanks so much. Uh, and uh, you know, you're right about everything right up until when you're not. What does that mean? That's a sneak peek of the Just Me app. Excellent. And awesome. Does that use Twitter data? Uh, actually, we, put, we publish into Twitter. We don't suck anything out of it. Excellent. And uh, Kevin Marks, thank you very much. 
Uh, I want to thank uh, Rackspace and particularly Rob Legess, without which this show would not be on video. I want to thank uh, New Tech and their TriCaster for making this video. I want to thank uh, our producer and director, Tina Chase Gilmore. I want to thank everybody who showed up. It's nice to see uh, Dave Weiner paying attention. And uh, uh, I want to thank everybody who showed up and especially those uh, who will in the future. We'll see you again next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>